this is Mikhail Manasseh, producer and host of the show. Uh, with me today is Yosef Gabriwat. Uh, he is a writer and analyst on issues of the Horn of Africa. Yosef Gabriwat, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me again, uh, uh, Forsyth. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, recently uh, I have heard you characterizing the uh, Tigray of today as a huge concentration camp. Why? What is the basis for this? And where lies uh, the parallel between the two? Uh, the reason why I did that is uh, 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 almost all the characterizations uh, that uh, uh, historians or uh, 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 others has come up uh, in order to define a concentration camp uh, fits the present conditions of Tigray. Huh? Uh, let me uh, fo focus on few of them. You know, uh, uh, one of them is uh, the, the the kind of people that they target. Uh, uh, who ends up in the question is who ends up in concentration camps? Uh, one population group is of course the uh, political prisoners. Uh, uh, that has been the case, for example, in Soviet Union, the Soviet Union. Uh, uh, we see in the Soviet Union, uh, uh, in Siberia, uh, uh, such con concentration camps, I think Solzhenitsky, uh, Solzhenitsky that called it uh, uh, the, the Gulag Archipelago. Uh, uh, but uh, in most cases, uh, the targeted people, the victims are a minority group within a nation. That a minority group usually is identified as being subversive, uh, treasonous, you know, as uh, the root of the problem of that nation, and hence uh, their extermination would only uh, uh, extend, you know, the viability of the nation. Uh, so, for example, you know, the Jews in uh, in, in uh, uh, Germany. Huh? Uh, the Rwanda, although they were not taken into concentration camps, the Rwandans, huh? uh, or the African year in the uh, in the uh, in the war between the British and the Dutch Afrikaners in South Africa, huh? uh, you see this uh, uh, this phenomena where a, a, where a, a, a people are being targeted and then moved to concentration camps. Uh, not necessarily for extermination. In the, in the most extreme cases, you know, such as in Germany, it's extermination. But in other ones, for example, the Japanese in the uh, in USA during the 1945, uh, during the Second World War, I think it's 1941 or 42, uh, that uh, uh, the Japanese were interned in one area in the United States, but not necessarily for extermination. Uh. So the goals vary differently. But in most cases, it is a certain population group. And now in, in Ethiopia, uh, the dominant narrative has been, uh, I mean, consciously uh, developed by Abi and the Amhara nationalists was that there is no distinction between the TPLF and Tigrayans. That narrative, you know, uh, has to do a lot with what is happening today uh, against the Tigrians everywhere, be it in Tigray, in Western Tigray, or in the rest of Ethiopia. Hmm? So the focus on Tigrayans is, is that identifies uh, 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 what is existing now in Ethiopia uh, as uh, in, Tigray, in Tigray as a concentration camp. The second one is the place of the internment itself. That gets a little bit tricky, and that's where exactly where the difference lies. For example, uh, as I mentioned in the Japanese case, uh, the Japanese everywhere that, are, that used to, love, to, to live scattered everywhere in, uh, in the US has to be fetched uh, from their homes huh? and then taken into that concentration camp. The same is true about the Jews in Germany and Eastern Europe. Uh, they have to be fetched first from all those places then put pro probably in most cases in a transit area like the ghetto, huh? and then move to the concentration camp for the final solution. Uh, the same we see, for example, in Germany, uh, it's believed that it's haunted, uh, it's art of genocide uh, prior to the, uh, the genocide that, that took place in, uh, in, uh, in Europe. It was done in Namibia. 
in Namibia, uh, it exterminated 80% of the of the Herero people, a tribe called Herero, and almost 40% of uh, another tribe called Nama, because they resisted uh, the colonization of, you know, the expansion, uh, the Lebanese realm uh, expansion of uh, uh, of Germany. Eh? So they were also exterminated, more or less similar in what is happening in uh, in Tigray today. First, they were moved into, they were forced to move into the Namib, uh, Na, uh, Navib desert, where they died. Many of them died in starvation and uh, uh, dehydration. After that, the rest of them, when they when they surrendered, they were moved to concentration camp and exterminated. Now, what makes it different in Tigray is that you don't need to move the six million people that are living in Tigray into a different concentration camp. That is not necessary. And the people would also resist. Uh, that's what the uh, war is all about. The Tigray people are resisting. So the best way for uh, uh, the Ethiopian government to do is to encircle Tigray as it is right now being encircled, eh? conduct a siege against Tigray, eh? uh, and uh, through the denial of all kinds of services, especially uh, medicine and uh, uh, and food, eh? uh, slowly uh, uh, extre exterminate as much as possible. Many people through starvation and disease. That is the aim of this concentration camp. You don't need a barbed wire, you know, to surround the guy. You don't need walls like in Auschwitz, for example, eh? uh, to surround the uh, the internet people. All that you have to do is surround the, them the way it has been surrounded now, uh, with huge armies. For example, the Eritreans, the Eritrean army, the huge Eritrean army in the north. Eh? In the east, there is the Amhara, uh, various forces of Am I army in the west. In south, there is various forces of the Amhara, Amhara forces. Uh, in the east, there is the Afar, and then there is the federal troops all along that area. With that, you know, with and that, there, and the, the Eritrean forces are not only in the north but also in the western the, part. In the western part, yeah. So you have the, all of this, you know, surrounding that concentration camp called Tigray, that huge concentration camp, Tigray. Now, what they do in ad, what they have to do in addition of that is, all that they have to do is. Anywhere, uh, anywhere else close enough to Tigray, you know, for example, Western Tigray, a million of people have been displaced in order to move them into the concentration camp, into the concentration camp, which is that part of Tigray that has been surrounded now. So you move the almost one, one million people have been uh, have been ethnically cleansed from Western Tigray and move it into the concentration camp. So for all practical purposes, you know, and the technology also has to do a lot with it. This wouldn't have been possible 40 or 50 years before. But now with the technology, you know, you, uh, Abi could uh, uh, set, uh, I mean, uh, put on and off, you know, the, tri uh, the, 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 the trigger uh, so that he could uh, 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 cut off all kinds of services in the guy, internet, uh, uh, telephone, uh, and all kinds of other services in the guy, water services, even because they are dependent on uh, the electricity and all kinds of economic activity has been cut off because there is no electricity. Uh, and of course, prior to that, they have also done a lot of destruction inside the guy. And so you see this, when you see, look at it uh, from a little bit, from a distance, then you could see that the entire Tigray is now uh, being treated as a concentration camp. Now, uh, when you move uh, 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 once, you know, once they have, s well, when, when they were inside Tigray, you know, uh, when the, all the, the forces were inside Tigray, they did the job, you know, of preparing the Tigrayan people for mass starvation and mass disease, you know. Uh, uh, so it was already the, 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 the work that has to be done in order to turn uh, Tigray into a, uh, into a concentration camp from inside had already been done in the eight months before. And all that they had to do now is from outside and circle it and treat it as a real concentration camp. That's why I call it, you know, uh, it is because Tigray now is a huge concentration camp. Hmm. Wow, it's, it's interesting, but 
Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, yeah. This seems to be a very neat description of yours. Uh, but how do you reconcile this uh, neat description of state of affairs in Tigray now to the messy way this war has been conducted? Uh, for instance, the armies, the forces of the, the, I mean, the Ethiopian forces and the Eritrean forces and the Amharas, uh, the, particularly the, the Ethiopian and the Eritrean armies, didn't leave Tigray uh, so as to completely surround it from outside. Uh, they left Tigray because they were um, routed and defeated. Uh, what do you say to this? I uh, understand, uh, understand what you are talking about, you know. Uh, uh, there is this thing, you know, things as things kept evolving, you know, as, kept, as things kept uh, changing, the strategy of uh, uh, the Ethiopian government goal also keeps changing. But we have to understand two things. First, the goal has always remained the same. It's to entirely destroy Tigray eh, with genocide in their mind. We could see that from the very beginning. For example, with the Amhara force entering Western Tigray, the Kadra massacre, with the Kadra massacre, which was, which was of, uh, by the way, done uh, throughout Western Tigray, probably with tens of thousands dead. We don't know yet again the exact numbers. Huh? And with more than one million ethnically cleansed, that was the aim. The aim was genocide, even from the very beginning, on the side from, from the side of Western Tigray. And then from the Eritrean side, you could see the massacres that has been taking everywhere they went, huh? and uh, uh, all the things that they did, uh, the mass rapes huh? uh, and the uh, burning of uh, villages, the burning of crops and so forth, and so on and so forth. It was all intended to end up in a mass massacre. Now, we could uh, probably we have to use the word siege in order to S-I-E-G-E, -E, I want to underline that, you know, as the word siege explains it. Siege, the sad siege. There is a siege from inside and there is a siege from outside. But both of them, the same purpose. What was uh, exactly taking uh, the siege from inside? Okay, uh, I have said uh, more than one million ethnically cleansed, no? hundreds of thousands uh, of homesteads were destroyed. Some of them burned down, huh? and uh, many of them also appropriated, especially in Western Tigray. They were simply taken away from them. Huh? Uh, and now uh, there were tens of thousands, of course, massacred, tens of thousands raped. Most of the crops were deliberately destroyed, huh? uh, if, uh, and some of them were pillaged, taken to Eritrea or to another place. Uh, and uh, Millions of animals, uh, of farm animals, were killed uh, and looted. Uh, the urban in the urban areas, you know, anything that emp uh, uh, employs people, you know, like factories, businesses, uh, schools, universities were destroyed. Hmm? Banks were destroyed and robbed. Cash, the cash, the cash overflow flow uh, in Tigray was stopped. Uh? Many services. While this, I'm talking about this, while they were inside the cry, while they were inside the cry, uh, many of the services were cut off, electricity, internet, phones, water, uh, to, to the surrounding area. Hmm? The health centers especially, they are focused on health centers with disease in their mind. Imagine that. Uh, the hospitals, clinics, pharmacies, the only factory uh, in Adigrat, you know, they were all destroyed, method. systematically they were all destroyed in order to deprive the guy of any kind of medicine in the land. Eh? And then, of course, uh, uh, as a result of all this, more than two million people were displaced. Now, this was the siege taking from inside the guy. The siege happens to the people, not to the land. Even now, when we talk about the siege of Tigray, the aim is the people, not the land. So. The siege was taking place while they were inside the cry. If they had, if they could have done it, you know, they would have continued uh, with that siege, you know, uh, with uh, millions of people uh, probably dying of starvation and disease. That was their aim. Now, when they were evicted from Tigray, you know, although it was a, that was a big loss to them, they felt that 
they are they were in a better position than than uh, than before because now they could completely encircle the guy while they were inside the guy they were forced to provide you know because the world was watching them they were forced to a partial uh, uh, services to the people you know like partially banks were open uh, electricity was there uh, and uh, one of the reasons was precisely because they were also using them you know huh? now they could do a total kind of siege throughout the guy that's what is happening what has been happening probably in the past uh, 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 let's say almost uh, seven uh, seven months that's exactly uh, since the time they uh, left the guy that's exactly what's happening now so for example to give you to, to answer to your question uh, how it evolved you know at the beginning when they entered western tigray about 60000 tigrians uh, made their way to uh, sudan you know yeah to sudan now it suddenly uh, the, the amhara force understood you know they 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 quickly corrected their mistake they understood that if a million tigrians were to end up in tigray all those ethnically Sudan. cleansed, uh, I mean, in Sudan, yeah, uh, all those who, who are ethnically cleansed uh, uh, in Western Sudan, then the, they will probably, they will for sure come back after the war has ended. So it would be a futile work, you know, to, to do this kind of work because this is not a final, the final solution that they were seeking. But so, uh, as soon as they understood the consequences of what they were doing, they completely sealed the border of Sudan and forced the Tigrayans to enter into further interior into Tigray, where they, will, they were hoping, they are, they are still hoping, they will die through disease and mass starvation. So you could see the development, that, that's how I see it. Okay, uh, you briefly touched on the issue of medicines. Uh, in the siege of Tigray, one of the most potent uh, weapons of the Abiy government has been using uh, medicine, the denial of medicine. Uh, could you explain how this also fits into the, your description of a concentration camp a little more? Yeah, uh, uh, I'm sure, you know, uh, it's one of the most potent uh, weapons that uh, uh, Abi has in his hands right now, you know. Uh, let me give you briefly, uh, although it's uh, an amateur assessment from mine, you know, uh, probably there are better people uh, from the medical world, uh, doctors and stuff like that, you know, uh, from Tigray, uh, who are better positioned to answer this in a much more, you know, clear, uh, clear terms and in precise numbers. But let me give you a rough idea of what is at stake right now. Let me start with the HIV positive. Tigray right now has more than 100,000 pe uh, persons who are living uh, with the HIV. Uh, this is uh, part of the problem throughout Ethiopia. Uh, there are probably around 2 million people living with HIV. So Tigray had its share of uh, HIV positive people in living in Tigray. Now, HIV has been made controllable or manageable, you know, uh, because of the development of uh, uh, medicine uh, and it's it's now like any other disease if you religiously take those medicines then you probably will live you know uh, into the into your, into, uh, into the whole into your old age eh? now but if you stop taking those uh, uh, it immediately comes back the medicine and you would have probably a few months to live uh, if you don't uh, if you don't get any treatment Already I have heard that hundreds of uh, HIV positive people have died in Tigray because of lack of this medicine. Eh? And if this continues, then you could easily see that, let's say, I, I don't know, four, five, six months from now, almost all of these people, almost all of the 100,000 HIV positive people dying in Tigray. It's that impactful. The denial of medicine is that impactful. But still, that's not all. Because the HIV positivity, you know, when it suppresses the, 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 uh, the virus, eh? uh, the transmission rate also uh, from passing from one person to another declines, declines. So as soon as the medicine uh, is stopped, then uh, with, the, uh, with the disease coming back, eh? 
uh, the immune system will be suppressed uh, and the transmission rate uh, gets great. You know, in simple words, uh, uh, it becomes as contagious as it was before. So you will have an epidemic inside Tigray, an HIV epidemic inside Tigray, the way it used to, the way we used to have it before. So that is an additional problem. Another one is the children that are born to HIV positive pregnant women. That too, there is effective medicine nowadays that almost, uh, uh, the, the case is that almost all of the uh, children born out of uh, HIV positive women are now being born as uh, HIV negative. Now that tool disappear. Uh, I am not sure of the ratio, but most of the kids that will be born uh, from an HIV positive woman without medication, which means uh, then it will be, uh, you will have many children born HIV uh, negative. That, I mean, HIV positive. Positive. Okay? HIV positive, yeah. So that also will have to be put in consideration. When we come to diabetics, you know, we have heard about it also. Uh, numbers were being thrown. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many. I'm sure that uh, they are in thousands, but from 6,000, I have heard 10,000, I have heard 25,000, you know. Hmm? Uh, how many of them are, uh, most of these are taking insulin uh, in order to survive. Now, we have heard about the problem of insulin integral. If that stops, then all of these thousands of diabetic uh, patients will die. Uh, another one is uh, cancer patients. Uh, the other ones are, for example, dialysis. We have heard about it, the lack of dialysis integral, already they are dying. And then there is uh, people who live on pills, for example, in the USA. In the age, you know, in the, uh, uh, for a 60 and above or 65 and above, we see that people are living daily with three or four kinds of pills. You know, it might not be uh, uh, that prevalent in in in, uh, in Tigray, but still, there are many people who live on daily pills. You know, for heart problems, for cholesterol, for high blood pressure, and many other diseases. You know, all of these are, you know, either slowly or quickly facing death uh, again, you know. Then there is, of course, people who die on wounds, you know, with all the drones and stuff like that, you know. And then there is, the bigger one is the COVID-19. Uh, uh, there is no vaccination in Tigray. Yeah? Uh, there is not even masks. You don't even see people uh, covering masks, you know. Huh? So we have all these problems in Tigray. Now, a rough estimate was given by uh, a professor, uh, he, he used to be a professor in Makale uh, by the name of Tony Magana or Magnana, I'm not sure. Uh, Tony uh, Magana. Uh, Tony uh, okay, Tony Magana. Okay, Tony Magana. Uh, he wrote an article, an excerpt, uh, excellent article, you know. Uh, he came up with an estimation. Uh, he used the 1952 statistics uh, because at that time there was little uh, to none, you know. Med medical services in most parts of Ethiopia. At that time, uh, 32, the statistics for the mortality statistics was uh, 32 for every 1,000 person. Uh, that had improved, you know, between 1952 and 2020. It was for, for the whole of Ethiopia, it was about six per, uh, per thousand. So there is a drastic uh, change, you know, uh, between 32 and six. Using that 32 now, uh, 32 uh, to uh, for uh, uh, to 60 uh, to, to 1,000, he came up. Well, as a threshold, he came up with, uh, I believe, about more than 220,000 deaths in the crime. Hmm? Now, I think that's also underestimation because he doesn't take into account the twin epidemics that, I'm to, that I was talking about. If you take into account the twin epidemics, which be, which is the HIV epidemics, eh? and then the COVID-19 epidemics, then you will have to add hundreds of thousands more to that to that to that figure. Now, we, we, you know, when when we do this, you know, we have to remember that uh, all of this. It's not all. We don't have integral only man-made famine, but we have a man-made. Uh, 
what what should I call it? Epidemics or uh, diseases, man-made diseases, you know, have been created in Tigray without any medication. Huh? Uh, for example, uh, let me give you one or two examples. The destruction of uh, the water infrastructure, the rural uh, water infrastructure in Tigray. No, it was all over Tigray. Uh, they, ha they have begun to drink in the rural areas clean water. They deliberately, especially on the Eritrean side, they deliberately destroyed all kinds of water infrastructure with this in mind. Imagine. At the very beginning, they did it, you know. They were trying, what they were trying to do is force the, Eritrea, the Tigray people to uh, get their water from uh, unclean areas. So instead of drinking clean water, if you drink unclean water, then you will end up with a lot of diseases. That's one. The other one is, for example, is uh, crowded areas in IDPs, in IDP centers. Hundreds of thousands of them are crowded, are living crowded in IDP centers. Imagine what COVID-19 would do in such areas, you know? It will cause a disaster, it will cause havoc. Almost everybody uh, will have a COVID-19 uh, within a few days, you know? So how it was, you know, intentionally created, we have both man-made famine, and up to now I have only been talking about, you know, uh, the lack of medicine. Only the lack of medicine, as we have seen it probably would, uh, if it continues this way, probably it will kill half a million people. Only the lack of medicine. It has been underestimated, I believe, in my, uh, my opinion, you know. Uh, people have not been stressing, you know. The they have only been looking at the lack of food, but the lack of medicine, when it is, you know, for, especially when it is uh, 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 combined with uh, uh, with the lack of medicine, you know, because uh, precisely many of the people who are starved die eventually by, uh, through, uh, through one or another kind of disease. Eh? So you could see the dynamics be between the two, how it will uh, uh, impact, you know, the cry in a huge way, you know, in a huge way. And uh, we have heard reports uh, on the news of children being born, you know, with deformities, maybe because of this uh, prenatal absence of prenatal care and vaccinations. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's almost. I mean, they have done it. If there is a perfect way of uh, uh, killing people, you know, huh? uh, uh, conducting genocide. Remember that uh, when Abi is doing this. He's working within an ambiguity in that area. The, the world, what the world is looking at, people dying of disease. Well, what's new? People die of disease everywhere in the world, you know? So they don't see how it's connected with, uh, you know, in a genocidal way. You don't see, for example, in Rwanda, if you look at it, you know, uh, it's clear for the West to see what goes on over there because the machete in the hand, you know, uh, all that you see is a machete in the hand, and you see the intention is written in the machete. But when people die through starvation slowly and through diseases, you know, Abi uses that ambiguity to tell the world that this is not, he's not he has no intention of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, kill, uh, killing the people of Tigray, you know. And those who want to be fooled, the West, they buy that kind of narrative easily. And that brings us to food, you know, it's very clear that people who, if they are deprived of food, they will die. Uh, that's another devastating weapon uh, of the blockade on to dry. The blockade, yes, yeah. yes, without any doubt, you know, I mean, if you deny, you know, food, then it's clear what you are trying. First of all, you, you, you have made sure that uh, the food that was inside of the dry was totally destroyed. That's what they did, you know. Now, all that they have to do is uh, deny them food, and uh, uh, there you have it. You have a man-made famine uh, ready to destroy people, uh, millions of people. I do, I'm not going to dwell on the statistics because so many uh, already people have uh, millions are at risk. Uh, probably hundreds of thousands are at the edge of starvation, and tens of thousands already are suffering starvation. Big deal, and thousands are dying already. So we know all of that, you know, but let me uh, point out one phenomena with the Tigray leadership in mind, you know. Let me give you an example. Suppose a family of 12 is stranded 
somewhere in, in nowhere, in a, let's say, Arctic or whatever, it is, or a desert in the middle of desert, you know, they are stranded in the desert. Eh? And uh, uh, somebody have told them, you know, OK, it will give you, uh, uh, we'll come back to you uh, in a year time, in a year time. In the meantime, we'll pro we have, uh, they gave them enough food, you know, to last them for that year eh? and we'll come back to you uh, after a year. Now, unfortunately, just after they left, uh, half of the uh, uh, food that they were given uh, was lost because of a fire accident, let's say. Okay. Now they are left with half of it. They know, uh, they know that there won't, there won't be any rescue uh, for a year. So they have this dilemma. If they keep eating whatever is left now, eh, the 12 of them, it will be finished half year. Six after six months, they all of them face death. Or they will have to, uh, what they will have to do is, okay, if instead of the 12 of us dying, okay, let's, uh, let's make sure that the six of us die now in order for the six, for the, for the, other, for the other six uh, to survive. Because the food that was meant for 12, if it is going to end, uh, it will be finished in six months. Uh, if it's used by six people, it will end a year. They call it triage, you know, triage means, you know, uh, you could, you have to choose certain people to go to die in order to save the rest. Now I am not proposing by any means, you know, that Tigray should do this. Uh, be careful, you know. I, I'm not uh, proposing that, you know. I am bringing this example to uh, to to, to uh, emphasize the underlying structure of what is facing Tigray right now. Tigray, you know, is using its collective. Uh, uh, reserve that it has inside Tigray to survive now. It's being used collectively. It's somehow, whether they, you know, they do it uh, uh, intentionally or uh, uh, unknowingly, somehow the food that is there is being consumed by the whole of Tigray. If it's going to end up, it's going to end up abruptly. The same way uh, uh, as I said in my example, that it will end up after six months abruptly if the 12 of them uh, uh, decide, to well, they decide to leave. Yeah. Uh, then, in Tigray, since the, 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 the food that is consumed is being consumed collectively, when it ends up, it will end up abruptly. When it ends up abruptly, we are not going to see the way we are seeing now uh, 100 dead in this village, or uh, or uh, 1,000 dead uh, throughout Tigray. You know, we are not going to see that. Now, what we are seeing in Tigray is nature uh, uh, doing a trash. Uh, it's, it's killing the infirm, the old, the infants, the sick. You know, huh? those are the people that are dying right now. It's nature doing some kind of trash. But what I am talking about is that. Let's say in three months, uh, if in three months, uh, uh, if Tigray uh, has no more reserves left in it, then the entire population will face uh, starvation. And suddenly people will begin to die in, ten, in their tens of thousands. Now, if that is the scenario that is facing Tigray, what is the Tigray leadership doing to avert that disaster? Are they aware of that? Or are they sleepwalking into that cliff? You know, because it can fool you. Because all around you see people eating food, eh? uh, and it can fool you uh, at that moment. Uh, and you say, okay, we have enough time to, uh, for example, okay, we'll uh, uh, knock at the doors of the USA, the UN, and so forth. You know, uh, uh, we'll ask them to put pressure on Ethiopia uh, to get us, you know. Uh, food relief and things like that. You could be fooled by that, you know, because you don't see the disaster as it should have been, you know. So now, are they going to sleepwalk towards that, or do they? Ha if they have to act, it's to act now. The, the same way, 
uh, in my example, the, 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 uh, of course, in a very uh, dystopian way, but still they have acted at the very beginning. They have to act to his gonna today. I'm not saying they have to act to his gonna today, but the Tigrayan leadership have to have to find out a way of feeding its people. Uh, probably will come at it uh, towards the end uh, uh, quickly before this kind of disaster takes place. So uh, if this is the picture uh, we are seeing, which is a very horrible one, uh, why is the West resisting uh, you know, to come to terms with this character? Right?